Alright, let's talk NX version 18. As you've seen, I have three things on my list. There's Product Crystal, which in my opinion is a door opener of how NX is going to be used in the coming years. I have the new Nux plugin, which is maintained by the NX core team and which kind of rounds up our view experience with NX. And finally, also one of my favorite features is NX release. We've been dog fooding it for the last couple of months since we announced it. And now it's ready for everyone to be used in production. So let's dive right in. So if you have an existing Yarn PMPM or NPM workspaces based Mon repo, and you want to enhance it and add NX to it, all you need to do is add a single NX package to your package JSON. You then need to configure NX by defining most of the task pipeline and caching. And what NX will then do is simply rely on your existing package JSON script. So here, friends, we have that build script, which you can invoke with NX build, React Vite, and this will now run it. You can also see it runs dependent tasks automatically. And if you rerun it, it's cached. So we get a lot of speed benefits. You can also run multiple tasks across the mono repo quite easily. So you run the dash T build lint test, and these will be ran in parallel, also taking into account dependencies between the projects. So it's kind of like an intelligent parallelization that's going on here. So the configuration overhead of such a setup is actually pretty small, because as we have seen, we have a single NX package, we have the NX JSON, where we mostly need to use it if you want to configure caching or our task pipeline, meaning figuring out which tasks depend on each other. And then NX will automatically rely on your package JSON scripts. But NX always had more to offer. And this is specifically useful once your modern repo keeps growing, if you're working in a larger enterprise. And we did that in the form of so-called NX plugins. Now, NX plugins are very technology specific. So you usually have a plugin for React specific development, which is NX React. You have one for Vite, which is like lower level build tooling or Webpack or ES build, uh, or also like other framework specific ones like Next.js or Remix packages. And the goal of these plugins is mostly to enhance your experience with the Next and that technology. So they provide code scaffolding mechanism, some pre-building steps that might be useful for integrating it into a monorepo, or also for integrating it with existing technologies. For instance, you have a Playwright setup that you can then hook onto an existing Next.js app or Remix app or whatever you're actually building in a monorepo. So the goal is to enhance. Now, historically, these plugins have been a bit on the more config heavy side. So basically you had to configure a bit more stuff because there was a specific way of how they worked, which kind of blocked people a bit into opting into them or you need more effort basically for migrating to an NX plus plugin based setup. Now, Project Crystal is aimed to change that. And our thought was mainly like, what if the NX plugins were more like VS Code extensions? So think about, for instance, the Playwright extension. If you have a, an existing workspace, you can obviously run the Playwright test in VS Code without any problem. But if you add the VS Code extension for Playwright, it will enhance your experience. So it will add a play button alongside the test. You might get like a full test explorer, which allows you to more easily identify which tests to run and which fails and which, which pass. So the goal there is to enhance your experience. And that's exactly what we want to do with the Project Crystal plugins. So at the NXJSON level, there's a new plugins property where these plugins are being registered for your workspace. Now, more easily, you can just use a newly introduced NX add command. And here, for instance, we'll just add the NX Vite plugin, which will then be installed into your workspace and pre-configured. You can then see it in the plugin section on the NXJSON file. And it has a bunch of predefined targets here, for instance, for building, previewing, testing, serving uh, your project. The new thing about the Product Crystal plugins is that they directly rely on the underlying framework config. So in our case, the NX Vite plugin optimizes and enhances Vite applications. So it directly relies on the Vite config in this case. Now, if you have NX Console, for instance, installed, you will also see an code lens feature pop up directly in your Vite config, which allows you to open up all the targets that have been defined automatically for that Vite application. And if you open up the build one, we can also see it has been defined to be cacheable. It automatically inferred the inputs and outputs for the caching. And the cool part is even if we change now the Vite config, so we change the output directory, the plugin will automatically sync with that and adjust the outputs directory that needs to be cached. So apart from pre-configuring like the inputs and outputs for caching, one thing that we really wanted to do with the Project Crystal as well, which is kind of the theme of the Crystal, is to make them more transparent. 
And so as we have seen, we want to rely on existing framework configs and have them in sync, but also when we invoke the coding task, we directly pass through to the underlying CLI. So in this case, for instance, to run the build, we will run the Vite build via the Vite CLI rather than having our custom programmatic script to run it. Now, how much these plugins do really depends on the plugin itself. So we've seen by default, it's probably around helping you set up caching, making sure the inputs and outputs are in sync with the underlying config. So the Vid config, Webpack config, or whatever you're using. But potentially these plugins can do more. So we've already seen how they automatically infer targets to run. So for Vid, for instance, it was the build and running the dev mode server and stuff like that. And by being able to dynamically infer these targets, we've also found another very interesting use case, particularly for Cypress and Playwright. Now, both of these frameworks allow you to run like a Cypress or Playwright test by passing a single spec file. So it would run just for that single spec file. And that made us think we could actually do this dynamically now with these plugins and just generate targets per file. What is the result? What well, it allows you to basically split up that huge single end-to-end -end block into multiple more fine-grade runs. And this is particularly helpful on CI if you combine it with distributing tasks on machines. Now, during the launch week, a couple weeks ago, we didn't just release NX18, but we also released NX Agents, which is a more innovative way of automatically distributing tasks across machines. And now NX Agents can hook into this product crystal setup of dynamically inferring and trend tests and split them easily across machines with very little overhead on your end. So to enable distribution in your CI script that can be generated by NX, you can enable that start CI run and pass it to an NX cloud binary and also pass the distribute on flag, giving it the number of machines you want to distribute on. Once this is connected to NX Cloud, it will pick this up. And as you can see here, it will take this individual build and lint scripts as well as all the individual end-to-end -end tests and distribute them across the number of agents you have given it. Now, probably needless to say that I'm super excited about this feature. Not only how it integrates, as we have seen, with now the CI part of NX with NX agents and distribution and how much benefit it gives you there, but also how it brings us much, much closer to being less intrusive, less config heavy with NX. So it's really a door opener for us, leading us into the direction of staying more out of your way while still providing a lot of the benefits that NX can bring to your table in a monorepo, but also the NX plugins in particular. So if you want to dive deeper, we published a dedicated blog post for the Project Crystal as well as a YouTube video, which I'm linking here as well as in the show notes and the comments of this YouTube video. So definitely check that out to dive a bit deeper of what Project Crystal is all about. Next on my list is Nuxt. So we released also a native Nuxt plugin maintained by the NX core team and which kind of rounds up our Vue story. So we introduced Vue last year and with Nuxt now as well, you have a lot of good options to create monorepos with NX and Vue. So you can go ahead and create a new workspace with the create NX workspace syntax and choose Vue. And now you also have an option to not just create a plain Vue monorepo, but also to directly use Nuxt as your monorepo setup. Obviously, you can also add Nux to your existing view monorepo by leveraging the NX add command at the plugin, which will then give you a generator to create a new Nux based application. Now, if you give a look to that, we have the Nux app and we also created an end to end test alongside it. In this case, we chose Playwright, but we can also go with Cypress. Now, one of the advantages is clearly to leverage code reuse in such a monorepo. Here, for instance, we have that shared UI package with a Hello View component, which we have already used in our View app. And we can now go ahead and jump into our Nuxt app and import that same component also there. Uh, in the project graph, we see that kind of sharing reflected. Now, both Nuxt and the View app depend on that shared UI package. Now, clearly, a lot of these benefits come, first of all, with the easy scaffolding and integrating a Nuxt-based application into a monorepo, but it also gives you nice options now. So you could have like your view app in such an NX monorepo, you have a bunch of libraries, but now you want to share some of those things and publish them as a Nuxt-based application, which might be more scalable, has a lot of the server side rendering benefits. And so you can kind of use lots of those modularity approaches, as well as the code sharing approach that you might have in such a monorepo. Now, if you want to dive deeper, we also released during launch week a dedicated blog post about how the Nuxt plugin works, which has a video embedded, a YouTube video. And we also had a live stream with Daniel, which is the co-maintainer of Nuxt, 
where we did dive into quite some interesting stuff with real-time communication and party kit and much more. So definitely jump into that and check that out. Finally, Annex release. So we've been wanting to have such a feature in Annex for a long time. And last year at AnnexConf, we announced the first alpha or beta version of Annex release. We've been dogfooding it since then in our own Annex repo, and we collaborated with a couple of open source repos to test it out. And now it's ready for prime time. So it's ready for production for everyone to be used. Now, as you have seen earlier in this video, you can add Annex to any monorepo. By also adding the Annex slash JS plugin, it will give you NX release capabilities for JavaScript based applications. So you can then go ahead and just run NX release. The dry run will basically allow you to simulate a release run. And if you have not added any type of release configuration, it will just guide you through the process. So basically you go ahead and choose whether you want a major, pre-major, minor or patch version. And NX will then automatically version your projects. So if you look at the log here, you will see which projects were affected, which version has been added to the project. There's also a diff of the package JSON files that have been changed, as well as a change log that got generated for you. Now you can also go ahead and configure some of the behavior you want to have for Annex release. There is a new release property that you can add to Annex JSON, where you can, for instance, add which product should be ignored from the versioning. You can define a versioning strategy, such as conventional comments, or how the change log should be created and published here, for instance, to GitHub as well. Now, if you rerun the command now, you will see it does not query for the minor or major version, but it rather uses to your Git comments because we configured the conventional commit strategy. Now, this is all very handy, but we all know, and we also have that on the NX repo, that in more complex scenarios, you might want to do more work, basically. You might want to copy files around, adjust some of the content, and then run the versioning on top of it. And so that's why we added a programmatic API to NX release that gives you maximum flexibility. So you can basically define a release JS file or call it however you really want, and via the NX slash release package, you can get access to a couple of utility functions that help you version your project, create a changelog, and also run the publishing process. Now, however you want to structure these configs or this custom script is up to you. Here's just an example that you can also find in our docs, how you can potentially use this and the options that you can pass to the release changelog and release publish script. Now, there's much more to discover here. So NX release, first of all, in general, is kind of technology agnostic. So we implemented the JavaScript specific versioning in that NX slash JS plugin, but you could provide, and we might provide actually, further releasing strategies for other type of languages that might go beyond JavaScript. Also, if you want to dive deeper, here's a talk that I linked from James Henry, which was one of the first creators of the NX release feature in NX and one of the core contributors to that. So definitely check that out as it goes a bit deeper into the various aspects of how NX release can be used. And so you can dig there deeper and get some more info. So that's a wrap up. That's all for NX version 18. As usual, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified whenever we publish some new content. Uh, there's definitely coming quite a lot of interesting things down the pipe. So make sure you follow along.